Okay, welcome to the IoT showcase demo. Um, so we want to um, implement this complex system to show the pipeline of ma machine learning data science and accumulating the data uh, with IoT sensors from IoT sensors and also train machine learning uh, algorithms there, publish it uh, to the Spark running in real time to make predictions in real time manner uh, on the Kubernetes cluster and also visualize it uh, in UI for later analysis of managers, administrators or scientists. Um, so basically, um, data collection is needed to store all the data, for example, from IoT sensors to um, to later for, for analyze. Uh, we want to collect all the data in our cold storage on Azure and, and we want to later use it and analyze it, uh, for example, in the data science, um, for example, for machine learning. Um, so we, we want to use, uh, I'm sorry, we want to use machine learning and with machine learning we can uh, find complex patterns uh, in big, dat big data uh, and analyze complex data. We, want may we can train models to make predictions on it, um, but we, we can, uh, in, in our example, we find anomalies with our machine learning algorithms, but also we can use forecasting um, uh, and other machine learning complex algorithms there. Um, so, and Spark, Spark allows us to um, handle uh, incoming streams online in a uh, real-time manner with minimal latency. Uh, we, we can run uh, Spark, we actually run Spark on cluster and it allows us to scale, um, scale out pretty easily. Uh, also, we can implement some custom business logic, for example, for notifications. Um, uh, to send to, to for if we found found find, found anomaly, for example, and so with UI and dashboards, uh, we want to show to the results to our administrators or uh, data scientists of found anomalies. Um, so uh, devices uh, re have reported anomalies. Um, we can group by the anomalies by sensor or device. Um, and uh, show some graphs uh, to uh, to to analyze it. Um, so captures uh, are basically overview of the system, uh, and then we will show training machine learning algorithm uh, to detect anomalies on Databricks, and uh, then uh, we will show Spark streaming on the cluster, making uh, predictions with machine learning. Uh, also, we will show Redis, which stores the data. Um, we will um, implement data science on all the data stored in ADLS, and we will show Spring and UI part uh, of the system. So I will talk about the system as a whole right now. So um, we have uh, this uh, system prototype, which shows mainly two points that we can uh, train our uh, machine learning uh, anomaly detection uh, algorithm and model on the IDLS uh, Databricks part. And then we can publish it to our Spark running on cluster and Spark streaming, actually Spark structured streaming, can do the predictions and detect anomalies from uh, devices or our other um, sensors um, on fly, so it will do in a uh, low latency uh, uh, level. Um, and also when IoT devices uh, are sending data, they are going through Azure Event Hub and uh, it, the Azure Event Hub dumps all the data in ADLS and we can uh, actually, uh, the data scientists actually can reiterate with machine learning stuff and retrain machine learning model and then publish it to the Spark concates. And then uh, the, uh, I know maybe evaluation of machine learning model will improve. And also uh, we can uh, detect anomalies and publish it to Redis and our UI part can show it and uh, we can do the dashboards, admin panel, etc. So I will go into more 
details. So first of all, we want to simulate our data. We want to um, use some um, real world examples, and I uh, and we have picked um, the uh, industrial data set from Kegel. Um, it is um, some real data from some German factory, and um, the basic idea that we have devices um, placed on the controllers and uh, it shows moving and actually power and temperature and we can show uh, we can see here uh, how things are moving and the sensors track uh, power movements etc so um so uh, right here we are doing uh, machine learning and data science i will skip it i will show you that uh, the data looks like this so it is just sensors with some values behind them uh, and they are sending um, each each uh, each some time each uh, each uh, one tenth of a second here um, so here we're doing uh, machine learning and i will skip and go to uh, evaluation and performance of trained model so i have trained model and we ha we can see here that our prediction rate is 87 percent on anomalies we can detect 87 percent anomalies and 95 percent of uh not anomalies and real data so uh, we can visualize the predictions and it looks like this uh, so the red dots are the anomalies data data and blue dots are the um uh, normal data and we can see some patterns here we can do this data science uh, also the same here and we can save our machine learning model to the um, to the uh, IDLS or some other uh, disk type to type to um, uh, use it in uh, our spark structured streaming so um, basically based on this data set from Kegel we can emulate our IoT devices here uh, and it is actually what we have done we have emulated um, these uh, industrial um, uh, controllers on this part and they are sending data each second or five seconds to the something between this to the Azure event hub and then Spark on Kate can read it from Azure event hub so I will show you the uh, Spark and IKS Azure, Azure Kubernetes service uh, cluster part right now so we can go to my virtual machine and um, uh, first of all I want to show that everything is spin up on the uh, Kubernetes site uh, so we can see that uh, th there is two nodes of Spark are running and uh, IoT load generator which is our device simulation parts are running here um, so we can refresh the page on the Spark and we can see that two queries are running right now. It is anomaly machine learning query uh, structured, which uh, which can run forever. Right now it run for one day um, till now, and it's make, making predictions from the sensors that are sending the data. And we we can see that uh, we have aggregate uh, query running here, um, which is which doing aggregations on uh, uh, sensors, which uh, aggregates mean max and um counts on sensors and these two queries can run, run side by side um so we can actually see that our uh uh our machine learning anomaly query are running and uh, consuming some input rate so basically what it does it transforms our input data from sensors into the um uh, data sets that we see in so in the previous slides and uh it's making predictions based on this um uh, and also it futurizes and doing the all the data science stuff that that was in the previous examples um so it's running it's it's been up and running we can go to our redis uh, so um by the way we uh, store our anomalies in redis in azure redis uh if we see any anomaly and uh, if we do in some aggregations we store them in redis and we can actually actually query uh, the redis itself and see that we have uh, anomalies that are um that are uh 
uh, appending to our uh, regis list with timestamps and this is how our messages from devices are um, are uh, look like and uh, and so the spark decided with its machine learning that this one is is an anomaly and we have we can see here aggregations that are uh, um, uh, refreshing uh, each some some of the time each minute or something um, okay so um, uh, it is what I want to say about the Spark part. L then let's return to our ADLS and this part. So as I said, uh, sensors are sending data each second and uh, Azure Event Hub um, consuming these messages and then it's uh, dumping uh, the messages into ADLS to store to store the raw data here, there to do the data science uh, there um, afterwards. So we can go to our um, another notebook, uh, and this notebook connects to the um, to the uh, IDLS part, and it consumes um, all the data from the IDLS there, and uh, it um, um, doing um, some some exemplary data, data science stuff. So for example, we can group by and we can see the data is, sim is similar to what we saw in the Kaggle data set. And we can um, do some data science stuff. We can select things out here, see how uh, how it is uh, uh, looks like in, in the gr gr graphs and uh, for, for some uh, other sensors. And we can uh, also do the counting, do the uh, actually even even streaming stuff here, so we can re retrain our model on this part and then again publish it to the Spark if we want to. Um, so and the last thing that I want to say is about the Spring server. Uh, Spring server is uh, spinning up uh, in our Azure, and we can actually. Uh, do some aggregations here. Uh, uh, we can see that everything that's uh, posted into our Redis are uh, stored here, and we can uh, uh, just query it and see the REST API here and uh, view it. So I think it, it is all on, on my part. Um, then I can, can say about our UI part. Okay, thanks. Basically, the uh, UI part of the project is in JavaScript in uh, it's written in React. Uh, we didn't use any CSS uh, frameworks or libraries for this dashboard design. Uh, we just wanted to highlight the anomalies of the sensors uh, reported to the client in a more interactive and visual way. Uh, to do that, we just separated the dashboard into four groups. Uh, when the user just logs in and sees the dashboard, uh, the first uh, part is the uh, Featured anomalies, so maybe in the near future they just want to see the uh, featured sensors and uh, just to visualize it in, a, in an open way. So it's like a weather forecast, but uh, we put the timestamp, the value, and we generated like a status for it. So this is something that should that might come in the future and the date of it. Uh, the second part was a table. We have a table layout, but as we have so many sensors and devices, uh, we prefer to just um, hide and show the uh, data visualized by the uh, table so we can click on it and see in a much more detailed way uh, the data returned from the endpoint. So we have some places as well, but uh, we added some countries just to visualize it, but uh, we can change that in the future as well, based on the client needs. So we have the value return, the status generated, and the hours. So basically, the date is the same. So we just wanted to show the um, the timestamp as hours, and based on the uh, status return, the colors can change as well. So we have like this kind of table layout, like a drop down for each and every sensor grouped by the device and the sensor ID. So we just need to click on it. Uh, the third part is basically the graph based on the return value from the endpoint. We added four at the moment. One of them is the line chart on the left top side. Uh, the other one is the bar chart on the right top side. The left 
uh, bottom one is the radar chart and the right bottom one is the pie chart. On the pie chart, we are showing the uh, generated statuses. Uh, we can click on them and just show the uh, desired uh, status in a pie chart. The left one and the right one on the top side are the are identical, but uh, we just wanted to show that we can uh, visualize visualize this, this data on a line chart, on a bar chart. And the left one is just an idea of how we can just show by monthly uh, the values in a radar chart. Um, we can remove or add uh, as many charts as possible. We are using Chart.js as the graph library, and it's a pretty easy way to visualize the data uh, like this. And the last part is basically the featured values, like maybe in the near future we want to add some goals or some uh, values to showcase in the dashboard so the client uh, has an idea about the reported anomalies based on the devices and the sensors. So this is basically our dashboard.